Spider-Man, one of the most iconic superheroes ever made. This guy's got hundreds of comics, like 10 solo movies, over 30 different video games. All these different avenues create the ability to watch, read, and even be Spider-Man. But of these three aspects, one has almost always been flawed, being Spider-Man. I'm of course referring to the video games. Like, they've definitely released some solid ones, like Spider-Man 2, Ultimate, Shattered Dimensions, Web of Shadows, but it took them 36 years to really nail it with Marvel's Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4, released September 8th, 2018. And I will go on record saying that this is the best PlayStation 4 game ever made. Now you may be saying, well, lowly, you can't go saying stuff like that. What are you doing, man? You're gonna get jumped. And to that, I say, don't worry. I just installed this glass wall and two poorly mounted turrets with auto lock. Ain't no one getting through this. Except maybe Spider-Man, but what are the chances of that? Well, lowly, Fisk just had a shitty opinion. We gotta jump him now. Fisk. And boom. Look at him go, swinging fluidly through the city when, uh-oh, the goons are up to no good. Gotta swoop down there, beat him up, you know, teach him a lesson. Look, throw a few kicks. Oh, oh, we're in the air. Took him for a stroll, hit him with the web, give him the old spin overhead, and toss out his friends. Skedaddle over to the Willowly headquarters that has remarkably clean air vents. This may be a dirty criminal, but he has remarkably clean air vents. Look at this dumbass hiding in the server room. Stop him from checking my search history now! Alright, take care of the guys in here, climb the building, start jamming out to this funky tune. Writing your memoirs? Don't forget the hyphen between spider and man. It's impressive you made it this far, Spider-Man. But I will not be facing the consequences for my actions today, for I present to you my regular slab of glass and two poorly installed turret- Come on, man. Come on, man. That, that, that was expen- No! Look at him go, throwing around the old big skin. It's at this point, Spider-Man has had enough of Fisk's tomfoolery, so now it's time to just beat him up. And I mean, like, beat the absolute crap out of him. And that was just the first mission of the game. And may I say, what an opening! It throws you right into the action, showing you everything that makes the game so damn good! The huge city, the incredible graphics, the mechanics, the soundtrack, but most importantly, the one thing that every game review refuses to leave out! The fact that makes you feel like Spider-Man. Like you're running around on a rooftop and you just start doing parkour from thing to thing. You jump off the roof with a smooth as fuck backflip into a skydive. The fast violin cues in, narrating you as you plummet downward to your web onto a building. Mere inches off the ground, then the game hits you with that. Now you're swinging around New York, using a web system unlike anything ever seen before. It's so buttery smooth gliding through the air, but it does everything it can to keep you in the action. Runner skim into a wall? Actually, you were going into a wall run that keeps the momentum going. Accidentally landed on the ground or on a roof? Psych! It was actually to do a roll and boost yourself back up into the air, keeping that momentum going. Honestly, one of the best parts of the game. Just swinging around the huge open world city of New York. It makes being a vigilante bug look like a whole lot of fun. Now this alone makes the game worth it for me. But that doesn't mean the game has little else to offer. Far from it. What exactly does it have? You're not gonna believe this. A story. Meaning that this video has... Spoilers! This game has such a good story. It's got stakes, it's got conflict, it's got mystery. It checks all the boxes. But can it make me lunch? Check. All right, let's break this down. The city's in danger. Why is it in danger? The demons. You gotta go stop them. Silver Sable tells you to fuck off. Why is Sable being a bitch? Because Mayor Osborne is not huge into a little bit of trolling. Why are the demons doing this? Go against Sable to find out. Turns out the demons are under the control of a negative man who has beef with Mayor Osborne for that one time the mayor's finger slipped and killed his parents. Why was the mayor holding butter in his hands? Go trespass and find out. They do a solid job slowly revealing the overarching story. It's easy to get lost so deep in the game that it almost feels like you're watching the movie. The plot twist was solid yet predictable. That's not really the game's fault though. The twist relates to a character that most people already know. There isn't much they could have done. There were some things I thought could have used more time. In particular, Officer Davis, i.e. Miles Morales' dad. More scenes between him and Spider-Man from his introduction to would have probably helped the first time you play as Miles Morales feel a bit less out of place. Like, okay, in the game, you only have one mission working with the guy. He name drops his son a few times. That's it. That's all the buildup you get before they put you in his son's shoes just to kill him off. But that's really the only gripe I had with the story. The rest of the pacing is... Pretty damn good. But you can't have a good story without good characters. So let's talk about another thing this game gets right. The characters in this game are also expressive. Interactions and dynamics between most of the cast are handled perfectly. The decision to make Dr. Octavius a role model to Peter was a great idea, only further elevated by his betrayal later in the game. It just works so well. But there were a few interactions that I didn't like all too much, notably between Silver Sable and Spider-Man. Like, all right, almost every interaction between the two led to Spider-Man getting slumped. This is the guy who took down a seven foot tall 
bald guy who could probably take on a silverback gorilla with ease, but this is where he draws the line? I'm sorry to diss gorillas, but this interaction is dumb. Game graphics. I, I mean, they're beautiful. Being a kid who grew up playing Nintendo games, almost anything I see on PlayStation looks incredible. This game is no exception. The city is super detailed. Crowded sidewalks, tons of crap everywhere, realistic architecture. Kinda reminds me of, uh... Oh, oh, New York! And one of the most interesting details to buildings is how you can actually see tiny rooms inside of most of the windows. I've yet to see a city sandbox with that level of detail. But yet again, that may only be due to a personal case of playing graphically dated game syndrome. And unfortunately, yes, it's fatal. It's the reason I look at this squirrel in the park and think, damn! That's a detailed ass squirrel! You know, it blew my mind to learn the webs were actual 3D models. I could go get a lobotomy, hear that fact again, and I'd still be shocked. But if you think these details are really something, take a look at the people on the bo- Alright, uh, let's- let's talk about gameplay. Basically, you go around the city completing different objectives to progress. For the main story, you follow the yellow marker. Everything else is everything else. Between a lot of these, you'll listen in on the radio and hear about a crime in the area that you, as Spider-Man, have a responsibility to take care of. And while you could just completely disregard it and head on to the next mission, you gotta stop the crime, right? So come on, let's head on downtown and give them what for it. But before that, let's address the elephant in the room. The combat here is largely inspired by the Batman Arkham games. I've never played the Batman Arkham games, so I'm going solely off of reviews and other comparisons online. The combat is very free flow by design, all based around building up combos via various means, whether it be a few pummels or a cascade of gadgets tossed out when things get messy. Most of the differentiation between the two seems to come from the more acrobatic based movement, the use of webs, and more in-depth aerial combat in Spider-Man. The other part of combat is all about stealth. Basically, use your webs to fuck around with the bad guys while you thin out their numbers. If one sees another go down, they'll call for backup and alert the others of your presence. Like hit a highlighted object and- What's that silly noise over here? Uh oh, you got spotted. What's the plan here? Well, we could punch a guy in the air, jump up and join him, toss another on the ground, blast this guy with a silly trick, and dodge off his wall, lock, 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 and take out another one. Basically, there's a lot of possibility here, and you're gonna need it. These guys will swarm you into situations where maybe regular combat ain't enough. And if that happens, whip out the gadget wheel. Eight forms of idiocy ready at a moment's notice. Now these open up even more possibility for cool combos to spice up the gameplay. For a change of pace from slump and bad guys, sometimes they'll give you missions from the perspective of MJ and Miles. Both of these amount to fairly basic linear gameplay missions where you have to complete an objective, maybe a puzzle or something, usually without being spotted. And these missions do a really good job at showing what New Yorkers do best getting involved in pyramid schemes. Other times you play as Peter, usually to talk with Aunt May or work with Doc Ock. When you're working with Doc Ock, there are two fairly simple science-based puzzles. They do appear elsewhere, but their presence is mainly in the lab. In one, you create a path from one point to another while carrying the right voltage number. The other one is a spectrograph where you match line patterns. If only real science was this easy, I'd finally be able to pursue my interest of not doing anything related to science. And that's the gameplay. Now to wrap things up, let's quickly talk about the many side activities. Not to be mistaken with the various side stories, you can also complete aside from the main plot? Around the city you can find backpacks left by Peter before the events of the game. Collect them and get a little trinket with a line of dialogue. I've seen people say that this is dumb because it kind of reveals his identity, and it's to those people I say, these NPCs are not smart enough to piece that together. The Taskmaster Challenges. Trials based around disarming bombs, following drones, defeating bad guys, sometimes stealthily. Scoring is just balanced enough to make it decently difficult to rank gold. Like you actually have to try for some of them. The Black Cat Things. Spot the flashing cat and run. Probably the most boring side quest in the game. Research Stations. Complete activities across the map to reveal flaws in city infrastructure to keep Osborne from canning the stations. You're asked to do this by Peter's friend Harry, who's out of town during the events of the game. Cool way to incorporate Pete's friend into the story. The tasks themselves, I mean, uh, they're okay. And finally, landmarks. Visit different buildings, structures, etc. around the map. Snap a photo and bam. It's really basic, but honestly a fun side thing to do as you progress. Your motive for doing these things? Salvation. You get points. Using these points, you could get new suits and abilities, some of which unlock specials you can use on enemies. These specials range from restocking your gadgets to dropping a sick beat. I could talk about this game to no end. It's a very charming, fun game that I just can't see the flaws in for the life of me. The general consensus I get here is that it's a really good Spider-Man game, but not much else. For me, this is the reason I own a PlayStation. And although there are undoubtedly games more innovative with better mechanics and stories to tell, I'm really glad I got hooked on this one. Many of the game's reviews mention how repetitive the gameplay is, and no, yeah, I could totally see that being a bit of a problem. There's definitely a lack in variety of enemies to fight, and almost all of the missions involve taking on heaps of the same enemies over and over again. It can be tedious. Listen, by no means is this game flawless, that's just how I see it. It's not a game that'll have everyone addicted for hundreds of hours on end, but for me, that's exactly what it is. So let's get a run back on that quote from before. Marvel Spider-Man is not the best PlayStation 4 game, but rather a great game that has forever captured me with its incredible gameplay and story.
I rest my case. You gotta admit though, this is one masterpiece of a game, and in the realm of video game adaptations of superheroes, come on, this is incredible. If you can see past the game's shortcomings, you'll find yourself an incredible Spider-Man game that cannot be topped by anything other than the sequel releasing this fall. Holy sh**, they're adding queens! And if I still get jumped after all of that, I'll understand.